Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my studio. Uh, today I'm going to do a landscape, uh, which I've done before, but this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you've seen the, uh, the drawing, uh, the download. Uh, you see the picture here on my uh, preliminary uh, sketch. And I'm going to go through it. Now I'm going to show you a little bit simpler ways to put in background, the foreground, and so forth. So the real message today is to try to make the uh, simplification of the landscape. And I'll go through those steps. Let me take you over to my close-up camera. I got a couple uh, reference photographs and uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of background. Okay, this is a uh, this is the photograph here that I use as a reference. It's got a, a barn which uh, I modified a little bit. Uh, this large tree here, which I used some of the shape of that. And uh, down here uh, is a fence line and a lot of green grass. So I took a combination of these two areas to come up with my composition. And uh, this is a sample of the drawing. Uh, of the sketch uh, that's in the below uh, in the description of this video, but this is a sketch. Uh, this is a sketch that was downloadable, so that you can try painting this. You can paint along with me. You can uh, use color pencils, watercolor pencils, and paints. But this is the this is the beginning sketch. Now on here, uh, you'll see in the background is a low lying mountain area, mountain range. Uh, then there's some buildings along here. This is the middle ground, the buildings. In the foreground is this large tree and the fence line. And there's a pathway that goes back here from the foreground back into the middle ground. Now the first thing I do in all my paintings, I do, I do a value study. So this is the same, I printed this off on uh, my printer. I printed the sketch off and then I did a value study. I used uh, the water, the sketch and wash pencil to give me a dark, uh, mark on the paper. But you'll notice here in the background, um, what's important here is three layers. A background layer is going to be light, a light value. The middle ground which has the buildings in it is going to have the middle value, is going to have the middle value and also most of the color will be in the middle, the middle ground. That'll be a very colorful middle ground. The foreground which has the tree and the fence line is going to be dark. So I have a light, medium, and dark value range coming into the painting. And there's a pathway taking you back. I got some shadows across the ground to give a little more interest. But this gives me the plan, my painting plan, of how I'm going to uh, paint this landscape. Light, middle, and dark value. Now this was a uh, practice painting I did uh, in watercolor. You'll see the, the light value and then the middle value in the middle, which is going to be all of the colorful areas. Uh, this will be more, this will probably be the impact area here, this, this large barn area with its separate buildings. And then the foreground is dark. So basically the, the, the light is coming from the uh, right side across the painting. So this, with the light back here, this foreground makes it dark going back. Uh, I want to point out a couple of things here. Um, actually, the color here and the color here, these are too close, so that's probably, I'm, I'm critiquing my own, I'm critiquing my own little painting sketch here, my, my color sketch. So this will be a little bit duller back here. Uh, the colors on the ground, I'll probably, on the edges, I'll make them a little duller. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. And I'm going to mix colors here for the uh, foreground, not just a dark color, but there are several colors be mixed together to give you those dark colors. And you can also see the shadow pattern. I'll go through all that also. Now this is watercolor. I did another one in using the watercolor pencil. Now the watercolor pencil, if you're using a watercolor pencil, you really got to use a lot of pigment. Uh, real quickly here, I'll take out a watercolor pencil. And up here, up here in that tree, I use the red, use the red uh, watercolor pencil, and right on top of that, uh, 
I used the green. So you really had to put probably two or three colors together to make that pigment come out or pencil, or make that watercolor pencil come out dark enough. Then you put the water on it. This is water with a brush with water in it. And then you would go in there and wet that, wet that watercolor pencil to give you that dark value. So if you're using a watercolor pencil, uh, you're gonna, if you're gonna do a, a painting like what I'm doing with, the, with watercolors, you're gonna have to put a lot more uh, color or marks on the paper to make it dark enough. Usually two colors mixed together, two dark colors mixed together will give you a dark. Uh, and maybe you have to even use a third color to make it even darker. But that's what I did here in the foreground. I actually put three colors. I put brown, black, and a little bit of, little bit of green uh, on top of these fence posts to make them dark enough. Okay, now I'm referring here to the grays. Now when I mix, when I mix the darks, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to gray down some of the colors. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a complementary color. I, and I did, there's a video that I did a couple weeks ago in mixing grays and neutral colors. And it's, it's on YouTube. And I put the link in the description of this video. So you can go take a look at that to see what I'm talking about. Uh, when I show how to how to mix grays or how to how to neutralize some of your colors. Now today I'm going to use primarily a red and a green, which are complementary on this color wheel. The red, the red mixed in with the green will give you. Show it up for a The green mixed with the red will give you a complementary color or a gray color uh, on the painting. So this was this was the chart. This is a chart I made in that video that showed all the gray mixtures I used. And then this was a small painting I did as an example of using those grays. So I'm going to apply some of these principles today in this painting here. That's why I'm showing this chart. So let's go over. I'm going to take you over to my uh, painting board. And I've got the sketch already on a, I got a, a quarter, quarter sheet of paper. And I've got a sketch on there. You can see the light sketch I have. I got the drawing on the sketch on the quarter sheet. But what I did was, uh, because this is a quarter sheet, I really reduced the size of the painting. What I did was take the, I took the size of the painting and I've got, I got a border all the way around it. So basically, I really have an 8 by 10, 8 by 10 size. This outside edge could be a frame, or I can use this also to show mixture of colors. And then uh, the middle ground is going to be my area of interest. So I'm all prepared to go. Let me mix up my first color. I'm going to start with the background, which will be the, the sky. And I'm mixing up a little bit of... Uh, light blue, which is cerulean blue. And I'm using a large brush, I'm using a three quarter inch natural hair, <clears throat> natural hair brush, which is a silver brush. And I'm gonna go right over top of that, because, uh, because I know the tree is gonna be darker at the end, I'm gonna go right over top of that and not worry about, uh, I just wanna make sure I got the sky painted in. So I'm putting a little bit of blue and I'm going to make a little bit darker over here. I'm varying the color of the blue so it's dark on one side and lighter on the other. Okay, now I'm going to mix up. Uh, now that's still a little bit wet, so I gotta let that one dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working on a little bit of the middle ground. So I'm gonna go ahead right into the middle ground. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of uh, <clears throat> the light grass. I'm gonna start with a lemon yellow and the green number one. And 
that's the green and what I'm going to do also I'm going to put a little bit of red out here because I'm going to dull some of that down remember I mentioned the green and the and the red will dull down so I'm going to start here with the in the middle ground I'm going to start over here with the, the lighter green as I come forward I'll get darker and mix a little bit of that a little bit of that red in with that green and it'll be a little duller over here okay <clears throat> now I'm going to fix up a little bit darker green now a little bit darker green mix a little bit of blue in with it as I come down and I'm going right across some of these because they're going to be darker in the actual ending so I don't worry about painting over top of them so I'm mixing some of the colors now while they're wet mixing some of the colors and I want to get a darker mix down here at the bottom so I add a little, more, a little, bit, a little blue into that green And working over here next to the the building area and I'm uh, going to stay around away from that uh, the little fence line and uh, I want to be careful here with my my fence post what I want to do is keep that keep that uh, light so now as I come forward now I'll get much much darker much darker so I'm going to put a little more blue I'm using hooker's green now a little bit of cobalt blue and I'm going to get much greener down here and I'm going to put mix that in I want it to be also grayer it's going to be a little duller down here so I'm going to mix a little bit of red in with that just a touch I'm going to dull that gray down because I know it's going to be in shadow So as I come forward, the green is getting a little bit darker, and just trying to block in the colors now. I'll come back a little later with some darker uh, shadows and so forth. Now also over here on the right, to be consistent, I'll have that light green up here on this side. And then coming as I come down it'll get a little bit darker again I'm going right over the fence books I know they're going to be dark in the final painting so I'm not worried about that and I come a little bit darker green I'll mix a little bit of blue in with that And I can overlap this right out. I'm moving right out to the edge of the the paper here, which I got marked off as the edge. And I'll pick up a little bit of that red. Uh, that that red will tone down the green, so it's not so vivid as I come forward. It'll be in shadow. Okay. Okay. Now while that's drying, it looks like a, it looks like a real mess now. But I got the I got the foreground in. And the middle ground started. Now I'm going to go back. And I'm going to paint on that. Uh, I'm going to paint on that low range of hills back there. So I'm going to mix a little bit of purple, violet. This is Konakonum violet. Put a little bit of blue in with that, so it's not as not as vibrant red. But I'll put a little more blue. Mix a little more blue in that. And uh, I'll take my test sheet here. And we'll move out on that. So now I'm going to put in the the low rolling hills back here. The sky is dry now, so I'm going to go ahead and paint in the the low lying hills. 
and come on down to these lower little I got some little trees down here so I can just kind of paint around those a little bit right now I can paint right across that tree uh, because it's going to be painted darker in the foreground so I'm not worried about that just paint a little bit around this house this little building over here using the corner of the brush, the end of the brush. So these, these, uh, this flat brush is very good. It's a natural hair. Uh, this is a half inch I'm using here now for the smaller areas. And then uh, finish off the uh, hill back mass. I'll come back over this side behind the tree and go around these little buildings over. There's a couple little buildings here, then the big barn. Now, when I add a little bit of water to that mix, I'm going to make this a little bit lighter back here. Um, there's a little hill mass, one behind the other, so I'm making this one hill mass a little bit lighter than the other to show a little bit of dimension, showing that one hill is behind the other. <clears throat> there's a little, little, little structure here, a little silo. I'm going to paint around that. Remembering, I'm remembering that the tree is going to be darker so that I'm not worried about uh, going into the tree area at this point in the foreground because it's going to be darker. Got a dark foreground so I can not worry about that at this point. There's a little, a little tree over here. I'll leave that alone. I'll just paint around that a little bit. And come right on down to the middle ground, go down to the grass. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Uh, I may go in and put a little more, a little more dark in there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start on the buildings. What I'll do is pick up a another flat brush, and I'm gonna start with this main one. I'm gonna start with the middle ground. It's gonna have the, the brightest color, so I'm gonna use the pyro red and I'm going to go right in there and put in that foreground. This is the front of the building. And this is going to be the brightest uh, part of the painting because this is the around the impact area. Now I'm going to take it, wash out the brush a little bit and I'm going to, I don't want to have the same value. I'm going to, so I'm going to, what I did was just take a little bit of water into the brush and I'm going to spread that paint across a little bit so there's a change in value so it's not one solid color because the way that the sun is hitting that it might uh, have made a little brighter on one side a little darker on the other edge just to have a variation so all I did was put water in the brush and lighten up the color and what I'm going to do is uh, use that same color and go over here and there's another building here behind and I'll continue that color over here now here these I don't have to separate these two well, I'm going to have I have a little lost and found edge there which means just a continuation of the color so I don't really have to worry about that uh, now there's one more building out here that's got just a little touch of red in this one here a little structure behind the barn. I'll put red there also. Okay. And one more spot I want to get some red. It'll be at the uh, and I better change the brush because it's pretty small. So I'll change the brush and use a small round brush. This is the number number six round brush. Again this is uh, a, a natural hair made by silver brush. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a red top on this silo. Okay. Now I'm going to use that one more area I'm going to put red on. That's going to be the other, but I'm going to use a dollar color. So 
So I'm going to use a Lutheran, a Lutheran Crimson. A little bit of Lutheran Crimson, which is a which is a darker red, but it's not as bright as that pyro red. So I'm going to put just a little hint of red here, but it's going to be a different red. So this is a Lutheran Crimson on this small structure here, because it's further away from the impact area, so it'll have less It'll have less emphasis. Even though it's a red color, it's going to be a lighter red or a duller red than the, the main area. Okay. Lizarin crimson. That's the only place I have a lizarin crimson. Lizarin crimson in. Let's see. Now I'm going to, while I'm here at the barn, I'm going to go ahead and put the rooftop in, and I'm going to use a. I'm going to use cobalt blue. I got a little bit of cobalt blue on my half inch brush. So this is going to be a very colorful barn. This is going to have a blue blue roof, but I'm not going to have a solid. I'm going to give a little, again, I'm going to I take out, I hit these sponge with this brush to take out some of the paint because I want a gradation of the colors. I don't want a solid blue. I want to have a gray that go from light to dark. Going from light to dark value on the rooftop. A little, little gradation of value there. Okay, so it doesn't look all look the same. And then uh, a little bit of a little bit of blue over here on this little this little structure here. One behind the barn. Okay. And let's not forget this other little roof. I'm going to put another little patch of blue on this one. So these all have uh, similar material. Of the rooftop. So they're all going to have the same color. But different values. Some are lighter, some are darker. Give them a little interest. And I think I'll put a little bit of blue over here on this. This one's further away, but still try to lighten up a little bit. Okay. Once I put the shadow patterns in, they'll look they'll have a little more shape to them. Uh, okay. Now this barn here, what I'm going to do now, on the first mix I'm going to uh, take the, it's a red barn, so I'm going to take the red and I'm going to mix a little bit of green with it. Take that same red, mix a little bit of green with it, which is its complement, and that'll give me the shadow side of the barn. So I mixed green with the red to give me the shadow color of the barn. So. And that's what I went through on the uh, on the video I did on mixing colors, complementary colors. I used that particular color there, and then I can take a little bit of red, just a just a touch, and I can just put that in there. It give it show that there is red in that area, but most of it's in shadow. And then this this little building over here will have the same shadow. Same shadow color. Now, with a smaller brush, uh, the silo, I'm going to use a little bit of, uh, this is yellow ochre. So I'm going to take the yellow ochre and I'm going to put this a little bit of dark yellow here on the silo next to the barn. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do another gradation. I'm going to, that's going to be the darker area. Then I'll take out, take the brush, put it in water, and now I'm going to just, I diluted that with water. So the, the brush just has water in it now. So then I'm painting this now, and it will lighten up the color on the other, on this side. 
So I have a gradation of this color on the silo. It's round, so I went from dark to light. Now I hit the brush a little bit on the uh, on the tissue I have in my hand. I can pick up a little bit more of that color to make it look even more of a change. Okay. Now while I'm here with a small brush, I'll pick up some of that green and I'll come over here and there's a little tree here. So I'll use a little, this tree is in, sh in the sunlight. So I can put a little bit of color on that. And then I can pick up a little bit of the darker, a little bit of darker green. And I can put some shadow underneath on the lower limbs, the lower branches. So two thirds of it will be in shadow and one third will be in sunlight. Okay. All right, now let's talk about the big tree now. Uh, oh, there's some other trees. I can put those in. I'm going to do those while I'm here. Uh, I got some. I got a tree next to this little building over here, so I can go ahead and put that in. I'll dull, I'll dull that green down with just a touch of red. It'll be green, but it'll have a, a little, a little hint of shadow in it, or dullness because it's further away. So that's part of the lesson today is to uh, uh, use the you use the colors you have, but then think about where you are in the landscape. Over here is a lot more light. Over here will be less light, and therefore it'll be duller. It's further away. The color will be a little duller. So the way you dull that down is use the complementary color. In this case, the green, I, I had just, just a touch of red in that green mix and I dull it down. Okay, now I'm ready to start on the big tree. Um, I'm going to use the big brush. First of all, this is, this is going to surprise you, but I'm going to start out with painting this tree with the red color. I'm going to put the red right on top of the, of the branch, right on top of the the tree limb. Right? This is where the, the foliage is. It's where the foliage is. And uh, this top of the, I don't care about the top of the painting here because it's that's all extra space up there. All I'm going to worry about is the edges that come down into the painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the painting around a little bit so I can uh, manage manage the uh, branches here. So I'm going to come down with this uh, this red color. can actually also at this point here I can leave some areas some areas open because uh, the sky behind it will be uh, the sky holes behind it you can see some of the sky coming through this big brush is easy to cover this area so again I'm gonna, I've got to cover a large area so I use a large brush Leave a little bit uh, of that sky popping through the back behind the tree. So the sky is all done. I just painted the sky so it's finished. I just uh, put that light blue back there and now I'm just painting over with the, the red. And this red is just a background color. I'm going to add some I'm add some greens to this. So now I've got the red, the red uh, base coat. So now I'm mixing up a, a green, which is in this case is Hooker's Green. I'm going to take the Hooker's Green and go over top of the red. Now you'll notice right away it gets dark. 
because I'm putting a complementary color on top of the red, it's going to turn it into a gray or a neutral color. In this case, it's almost a brown. Almost a brown color, but it's got some green to it. It'll have a little red tint to it. So it's kind of a mixture of the both. And this, uh, this is kind of experimental because I've been experimenting with using a, a different uh, technique on adding the darks and lights. And this gives the, I think this will give the painting an interesting little, not only a texture look, but a different color. It'll give it a glow instead of just a dark, instead of just a dark color, it's going to have a colorful, it's going to have a colorful, uh, well it's a foreground, but it's going to have a colorful presentation using the, the green over top of the red because it's going to dull it down and make it dark but it'll still have a glow to it from the color mix because the red will show through in some places a hint of red will, sh will show through and give it another color so this is really an ex another experimental and I'm having fun with colors. I'm really playing with colors because I'm experimenting on how the colors mix, how the colors go together. And this is just another way of painting in a shadow because the foreground is backlit. The, sky, uh, the sun is behind, uh, shining through the tree. The tree is in the foreground. The, the sun's behind the tree, so it's going to be in shadow. Hey, I'm trying to move around here so I can paint this. You, you can, if you've seen what I've done so far, I'm just going to finish this off. And uh, yeah, I might have gone a little bit off camera because I was trying to get the edge. This is a, this is a quarter sheet painting, which is a, a pretty not a large painting, but it's a pretty good size painting. But for demonstrations, uh, it's a good size, and you can see. Uh, you can follow and see a lot of things I'm doing here and try experimentation. And it's, it's better to see it on a larger painting than it is on a small painting. A small painting is not enough detail to see what's going on. But here you can see enough times uh, of the results. Now once you once you do something like this and get a color going, you can always go back in and adjust. You can always go back in and add color on top. You can always modify. Uh, you can always make changes. Okay, now it's going to dry. It'll be, it'll it'll dry different colors. You'll see reds, greens, mixtures. I think that's make it very interesting. Now I'm going to paint the tree. I'm going to change my I'm going to change my brush size again. I'm going to go to a half inch. Now here I'm going to use. Uh, uh, I'm going to use, a, use brown. I think I'll use the brown. I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a brown. Uh, this is burnt sienna and a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. And that color will give me a nice dark brown. And I'm going to follow uh, my drawing here. I mean, I got to pu push this thing around a little bit. Let me get, let me get over here. I'm gonna turn it to the side so I can get the stroke right. Yeah, I think I'll change the round brush. The round brush will give me a little more control. I'm using a round brush to get a little more control on this shape here. This is a Kalinsky Sable round brush. This happens to be a number number eight. Yeah, let's see. I want this to be dark here because it's under shadow under the branches. Okay. Now I'm going to come on down. 
Now this is the shadow side. This left side I'm working on now is the shadow side. So it'll be the darker edge will be over here. But I don't want it to get so dark. I want to have a little more brown showing than, than black. So uh, I'm trying to pick up a little more of that burnt sienna. And I'll follow my drawing here so I won't get lost. Okay, then on the uh, on the sunny side, it's it's still in shadow, but I still want to have a lighter side. This side here will be a little less dark. I'm going to put uh, more of that burnt sienna over here. Be a slightly lighter value, so it'll be less pigment and more of the burnt sienna pigment here on this side. But this is all in shadow, so it doesn't matter. It's just going to be a dark color. We'll bring it on down. Okay, and I think while I'm here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some more. Uh, I'm introducing a little more of that uh, ultramarine blue on this side over here. This is more in shadow. I'm going to make this a little bit darker on this side, just just so that while it's still wet, this is a good time to put uh, another color in as while it's still wet. So I'm going to re reintroduce that dark. So now I have a real dark edge on the left side and a lighter edge on the right side, where the sun's coming from here this direction. Okay, now I'm going to work on the fence, fence post, and I'm going to use that same brown and, and uh, blue mix because it's in shadow. I could use, if I use the gray or something here, I'd, I'd still have to have a darker area. So it's going to be a, a dark gray, dark brown. And you can mix almost any colors together. You can mix reds and blues and oranges as long as they turn out darker. So this will give this effect of this of the light coming from the right side and then this part here will be in shadow all the way across. And I'm going to have a probably it look like a lost and found edge here because this this fence line will get lost in the shadow of the tree. And I can adjust that <clears throat> when the paint gets a little, a little uh, drier, I can adjust that uh, color a little bit to separate the two. And this one I'm going to try a little, give a little bit of uh, perspective on the fence. It's a little bit wider here and it gets a little bit narrower as it go forward to show it's at an angle. And we get this fence post here. Now we're getting we're getting a little bit closer to the sun, but I'm not going to go light right away. But right now I'm getting I'm, I'm aware of the sun coming from here, so I'm starting to think about uh, the effect of light. So I I'm thinking about reducing the darkness of this paint of this color. So I'm going to start with a this edge here there's a post that comes down here and there's one comes down here at the bottom. This is the gate that opens up. So I'm going to start dark there. There's a little couple cross beams here on the fence gate. And I'm going to rinse out the brush and I'm just going to pull that color across so it's going to get lighter as it goes out. So here I'm aware of the light shining. It's just lighter as I go away from this area because this fence is open. I've got the, the gate open which is welcoming visitors come, 
come in and visit the farm. So I've got the gate open and this is a little bit lighter out here because this, the light will be hitting this part, this part of the fence or the gate uh, out here on the end. So I'm accounting for the light. And on the side over here, this uh, this is still in shadow over here because it's you know it's, it's be the light is coming from the other direction, so this is still be in shadow here. This fence post here will be in shadow. Uh, this little fence post here, these are all in shadow because again, this light is behind, so this will show in shadow. And I don't, I think that's enough because my paint is going to stop there, so that's as far as I have to go. Then I'll get the uh, the railings going across; they'll be in shadow. Okay. I think I'll go ahead and put the uh, the roadway in, uh, and then I'll put in. Then I'll go back and put a few, a little bit, a few de details on the barn and so forth. Then we, we'll be finished. So let me pick up uh, a little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre on the brush. I'll use the round brush, and I'll come out of here with a little bit, of, a little hint of. dirt or rose coming out off the back here. And I'll make it a little bit darker as I come forward. An old old dirt. There'd be a dirt road going back into the barn. Make it a little bit darker as I come forward. Let me pick up a big brush. And using the side of the brush, I can get a a dry brush look, look like dirt or sand, and go right off the end of the painting. Okay, let's go back and do a little. Now I'm going to go back and do a little bit of touch up. Um, First of all, I'm going to fill in some of the grass, some of the green here in the grass around the around this gate here. Get a little bit darker. I'll put a little bit of green in here. And I'll put some. I'll put uh, cover the grass all the way out here to the all the way up to the barn. Okay. Now where's my smaller bush? Here it is. Okay. Let's start with the barn. I'm going to add in a. I'm going to add in a window. Up here in the top. And possibly a doorway. And I'm going to put a little window, a little hint of a window on this side. And then there'll be a shadow from the, underneath the, the roof. And probably one over here, the sun's on the, the right side, so I'll put a little shadow up here on this side of the roof. And a little shadow under this little building over here. And there'll be a little, a little hint of a shadow underneath this silo. And there's always a little shadow in the other building. And a little chimney out here. I'll just put a little dark spot there as a chimney. A 
okay. And, okay, all right. Now, I'm gonna add some shadows here to this structure. I've got the, I'm using the half inch brush, so I'm gonna put the little tree trunk out here. Now, shadows are very interesting. Uh, again, this is green grass, so I'm gonna use the green but then to dull that down, I'm going to put the complementary color red on top of that green to dull it down, and that'll be the the shadow color. So the shadow will come out here from this barn. And I'll let the shadow, the shadow goes right up. It'll be darkest right around the bottom, the base. So I'll put a little bit of, a little, bit, a little darker mix there. There'll be a shadow coming from this uh, little tree over here. And there'll be a little shadow from this structure. A little structure here will have a little shadow. And there might be some shadows out here just, just to put this ground, this building on the ground and maybe some of the trees and bushes out here would have some shadows on them. And this, uh, again, a little darker mix now, a little same green, mixed with a little bit of red. Uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a nice strong shadow coming from this tree. fence post. Now this fence post is running across the road so I'm going to use a darker value here for the the brown coming across this dirt so it'll come out here. And this fence post over here will have the same thing. A little bit of green here, a little bit, a little bit of gray, a little bit of brown here, and it might be a, a hint of uh, okay. Hmm. All right. Let me get the. Uh, let me get a mat board. Let me get the. I'm gonna get a mat out here. Let's see. Let me bring that over so you can see the whole thing. All right, put a mat board around that to kind of uh, block off the area that's interested. And of course, a mat board, you can, you can chop out whatever section you want uh, to the left or to the right and adjust it up or down. As you can see there, I'll, use, I'll put more of the tree, more of the tree into it there. Okay, that's more. Now this, this tree here, at least make sure two thirds of it is in, not, not, one, not one third in. And uh, uh, gives a nice background. You can see the sky, the low, the low lying hills behind uh, the big barn is is the focal point because it's got the brightest colors. Then you got the shadow pattern with the uh, the darkened trees in the foreground. Okay, let's come back to my main camera. Okay, well that was a painting of a landscape with uh, uh, the barn, the trees, and a fence, and. Uh, 
it, it can be complicated, but I was trying to simplify the fact that you could do it in three levels, do a light background area, a colorful middle ground, and then a dark foreground where the shadow pattern was coming up from the, from the sun uh, behind the tree. And um, keeping the impact area nice and bright with bright colors. Use the brightest colors in your palette or use the brightest pencils you have in your color set. So uh, that, was a, that was a good example of a simple landscape uh, with a little more, little more technical uh, things to think about. I think that putting those colors together, the red and green, uh, gives you a gray down look. Uh, but it also gives you more interesting darks. You don't have the same colors always. In other words, that, that dark green tree would have looked a little bit uh, pasted on if it was all one color. So I think varying the colors and varying the values uh, made it more interesting. Well, I thank you for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you have time, go back and uh, download that sketch and go over the video of what I did. Uh, look at the examples of how I did it and then go back and give it a try. Uh, and then go to uh, the Funnel Watercolors, which is on the uh, a link also on this video. Look down in the description. I got a link to the, uh, the gray and color mixing. I also have a link to uh, the Funnel Watercolors. And, and uh, share, your, uh, share your painting uh, with the rest of the group. I'd like to see that. So I hope you're all safe today and taking care of each other. Uh, it's uh, been a long time, but we're, we're going to hang in there together. So I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I forgot. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And give me a thumbs up. It helps me with my ratings. So we'll see you in the next video.